Hello and welcome. So today we're doing some Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, we are exploring a little bit of the different options you can choose in the game today. Um, we're playing currently because it is Veterans Day. We're doing a big charity deal. Um, and I, I thought, you know, if we wanted to kind of expand, um, you know, kind of teach people how to play. So usually... Um, if we look at the world, so there's a lot of stuff in Europe, including, you know, Germany at the time of World War II, um, where they they were a big powerhouse starting, you know, once Adolf had gotten control and started to really, like, rebuild from World War One, and that really helped them out. You got France, who was kind of, like, having issues with communist revolutions and other things, just, uh, you know, involved in that whole situation, you've got Italy with the rise of Mussolini, you've got the UK, which, if you look on the map, the UK has a lot of different colonies, um, you know, throughout the world, and I'm not saying Canada is a colony, but Canada is a part of the Allies, and as you can see, they have a little bit of a British influence, um, and then you've got the Soviet Union which is under the power of Joseph Stalin, which, if we look, you know, we all know who that is. Um, now, the Asian spear kind of explodes before everything kind of hits the fan because uh, Mr. Double Triple Chin, Hirohito, kind of uh, decides that he wants some of China. Um... He's trying to he's trying to get the bread if you know what I'm saying. You know he's trying to take over China. So usually when I play a game, um, I'll I'll play as someone in Europe because it's a little bit more entertaining. Whereas if you're over here, you got to rebuild. You know you've got to build, and you know there's just a there's just a spread of things that you can do. Um, and I I feel like with the UK, you can do a lot with the UK. But you're also really spread out. Like, you've got one part here, you've got parts through Africa, you've got to worry about Asia, you've got to worry about the Pacific area underneath, uh, I mean the southern, southern Pacific area, with Malaya and the Philippines, and then you've got a couple of different things here and there in, you know, China's kind of sphere of influence. And then, I mean, you've also got to worry about... Um, up here in Canada, so if Germany managed to take out Denmark, the A would take that over, you know, so on and so forth, and then you've got to worry about, you know, the colony here, you got some stuff here, and then, even though it's not really involving you, the Panama Canal is really important, so that's something to watch for with the UK. So, today, um, we're going to play as... Let's see, who do I want to play as? We're going to put this up to regular. We had, I had put it to civilian um, for when I was playing with friends. And as you can see, there's no one strengthened. There's no cheating. Um, but we are playing with a couple of mods today. We are playing with the Road to 56. Not, excuse me, not the Road to 56. We are playing with the player-led peace conference. And we are also playing with the instant war mod. And we're going to be playing with those mods to make the game kind of fast. Um, I'm going to kind of give you a kind of like, I'll go with Germany to start out with. Um, to kind of give you an idea of how you should powerhouse Germany. Um, and kind of trying to get that stuff established. So um, historical AI focuses are on just so you can see that I'm not cheating. Uh, obviously, we cannot get achievements because we have the cheats on, which technically the cheats are the mods, so there's that. So we're going to start this game up here. Um, just uh, start it here. So one of the very first things you want to do with Germany is you've got to look at the MIFO payments because the MIFO payments are something that was important to Germany when they were building up to World War II and you've also got to structure yourself to kind of fortifying your power in, uh, you know, power in Europe because if you don't, then the Allies are going to end up, you know, 
ruining your day in trying to establish that stuff there. Um, so the first thing you've got to worry about while this is loading, the first thing you've got to really worry about, so when we look at our army, we've got a full army of 30 in a regular game. So usually what I like to do, I like to get all of the all the units together that are not infantry and I put them in a brigade uh, usually put them under Rommel and then I'll put the other 24 under the next person available that has an infantry bonus which in this case um, let's see here did I miss him? yeah so it would be under the uh, Irvin von Witzeben so we'll put him there. Um, so usually what I also like to do to start out, I'll get my navies started, I'll get this stuff going, I'll put that over there. Um, so when we look at the national focus, you can see underneath the MIFO bills. So usually we're going to look at this, um, and there's the Rhineland, which we aren't going to do because there's actually a way I'm going to show you how to kind of get around that. Um, Usually what I like to do is I'm usually the person that strikes with a four-year plan unless I'm playing online. If I'm playing online, I usually go for something more um, more aggressive. Uh, we are going to also get anti-tank. It's going to be important. You always, what I like to do is start with either one or two industrial things. As you can see, this is 304. Um... We're going to get this because it's 140, so typically if it's below like 250, I will uh, go after it. Um, so let's look here. So we're going to go with, the reason being I'm not going to do the aircraft carrier is because the naval bombers that you can have from land will be more effective in my opinion than, you know, kind of striking from the ocean whereas you can waste manpower on those carriers and all the resources and they can get sunk almost immediately. Uh, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to research paratroopers. Just uh, just no reason at all. I'm not saying why but uh, yeah. Um, so as you can see we have 31 factories available. I usually like to kind of set up a couple of uh, resource gaining areas here first to kind of like set up the start here and then I fill up all the rest of the things here with the military um, so that I can sort of like have a frontal push on my resources when I start the, uh, you know, the game because if you look at the resources here um, we're down by 5 in oil excuse me rubber and we're down by 16 in oil and we're positive in everything else so what I usually like to do I'll push that there I usually add one to each of those, and I look at what we've got here. So we're not going to really use a lot of the tactical bombers, but we're going to be using a lot of naval bombers. So we're going to be putting that there. Scrap that. We're going to put one there, and then we're going to put one there as well, so we can try to get our fighter production up. So when it comes to the Navy, I always want to have submarines. I'll usually place them somewhere on these four provinces here. Um due to the fact that if I want to have a naval expansion to the west or to the north, I need to have something that is available um, as quickly as possible. So I'll usually get rid of these. Um, I usually like to go strict on the wolf pack sort of aspect of it because, you know, it, it gives them a better convoy rating efficiency and stuff in the end. Um, Germany starts out with positive equipment, but as soon as we start moving, they'll probably end up losing that equipment as well. Um, so I'm going to put all of my Air Force to one area so I can sort them up. Um, so usually what I like to do, so in this game, you've got to really focus on, if you're fascist or communist, if you want to attack somebody, how you're going to hit them. Because once you get to, I believe it's 25%, with the world tension, um, the allies can start guaranteeing literally as many people as they want if they can afford the manpower for it, um, which you see they can guarantee independence of people. Um, so that's something you've got to look out for, especially if you're 
person that likes to be a warmonger, um, it's going to be a big thing when you do manage to do that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is when we attack this group here, you always want to, I always kind of set up like this because you'll have people push this way and people push that way. Um, and then what I kind of do, because of the fact that when you go to war, this is the fun fact about the way you can make the Rhineland disappear. So if you go to war with the Netherlands or go to war in general, um, anywhere in this like hemisphere, it will actually bypass the Rhineland and you can immediately bypass it and then go to like these three. Um, unless you wait to go to war and then you go and go down the Anschluss, which we will do that at some point. Um, so the next and final thing that we should do before we hit play, the MIFO buildments. So if you look, you can see that the consumer good factories, if we fail to pay the MIFO bills, are 20%. That's going to really damage the economy. Even though um, this really gives you a sort of like boost, um, you got you to gotta make sure that this is covered because if it isn't then you're gonna be in trouble now here's the downside to having that so I'm gonna go to war just to show you kinda of like the layout of how to do things real quick but um, you've gotta really make sure that when you go to war you have your MIFO bit like you, it's gonna suck for a little bit because your factories are gonna disappear but you also have to know that you know You've got to also make sure that the sort of like the experiences from your guys are um, are in good shape because if it's not in good shape, then you're going to have some problems, and you're going to have some problems expanding your territories and your country. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to start on three speed. Uh, we've got to make sure that our guys are getting where they need to be. And as you can see, some of them took a second to adjust, but that's perfectly grand. The ships are moving, everybody's moving to a position. Um, now, understand, so since Germany didn't really have a navy, we're not going to focus on the navy aspect of it, because... Even though you can go down this tree and expand to get, you know, Denmark, Norway, Netherlands, and Sweden to go fascist, it's a lot quicker to just kind of like keep this here um, and just have them all together under, for example, you don't want to, I'll put them under donuts even though, yes I said donuts, I meant donuts, uh, my apologies. Um, I'll put them under this for now because... We're not going to be doing any naval battles for a little while, um, unless we, of course, make it to where the UK invites France, France joins the Allies, Allies pushes and tries to hit me. Um, so as you can see, if we look at the uh, sort of system for the Denmark country, uh, they only have four to six units. They have seven ships, which they don't really have a lot of ships. They have 42 planes. They don't have a ton of manpower. So if I wanted to push, which I... There's my sixth unit right there. Um, he'll get into position, and then we will set this up here. Instant war. So I'm going to instant war all of that. So in this case, since it's player-led... Um, so that's technically what would happen. Is it would raise the world tension by all of that and essentially uh, it wouldn't go back down like that it's just because I'm using the mod but you'd want to take out Denmark first which now if you look so we're now at war with Denmark right now look where the Rhineland went there's no longer a Rhineland focus right here the red lines are now gone and so if you look here you can bypass the Rhineland. And there's those three available. But we're not going to focus on those for a little while. We're going to focus on trying to push Denmark kind of like out of this area. And so if you really want to see the 
damage here. Put all those planes there, and there goes that side automatically. Usually, what I like to do is after I research the Pack 36, I'll try to get down a land doctrine, or I'll try to get marines for that slot, and then I I will continuously have one or two slots dedicated to like uh, the engineering side of things or the industry, and then the fourth slot is for you know the important things such as tanks or something like that. So as you can see, we've already broken through. simple and it's just a cakewalk now as soon as I get this sort of as soon as I get this port here that's pretty much done and over with for the country if I can manage to take these guys out before I take these guys out I'll actually have a chance at encircling them which is a pretty nice sort of bonus thing there um yeah so focusing on these and as you can see i believe originally we had seven and now it's down to four but as you can see the mifo building payments are now gone it's no longer here and there's nothing really to focus or try to push on there so now that we can push here push in and just push straight for Copenhagen because really, if you think about it, there's there's nothing left for us to kind of push and struggle with. Um, so when you take out Denmark, the thing it does for you is it actually grants you the ability to lock up the the excuse me the Baltic Sea, um, and the Eastern North Sea is gonna. The reason I'm keeping these guys here is so we can just start spamming submarines. Uh, we can lock up the Eastern North Sea, and then they won't, there's, because we own the sort of peninsula and stuff that's going to be here, um, the Baltic Sea is actually blocked from any allies from getting in. Now, if they take a port, they take a port or Sweden joins the allies, then they have full access to the Baltic Sea because of that. As you can see, all of them are being trained up slowly. Um, all of the units Germany starts with are all regulars. So you really don't need to worry about training anything. Um, as you can see, I've got a lot of positive infantry equipment and stuff. That's going to be very helpful. So what I want to do is I need to get a lot of rubber, and I need to get a lot of oil. So I can start mass-producing fighters and naval bombers, which, as we can see, I've been... Pass a bunch. Um, and usually, what I'll do is I'll take this and then I will take this one because later on we'll use that as a breaching sort of point there. Now, with these, because there isn't really a lot of land sitting here, I'm going to puppet them. Actually, we're going to satellite Iceland and then we're going to puppet them. Now, the reason I did this is because, one, there's not really a lot of manpower up here, and in total honesty, it really doesn't grant you a ton to have all this. So the reason I put these up here is because, essentially, um, they'll begin to create their own units out of that, which there's 4,000 manpower there, there's 1,000 here. Um, so they'll create units and stuff, which I can take. However, um, we have to worry about later on these guys. So these guys are going to purposely try to island hop. So these will be distractions while I push for something more to there. And as you can see, with me puppeting them, they now have seven ships in their navy, which is another, you know, which is another pro to doing that. Um, so we're going to get our six troops here. Now, this is the part where you've got to really decide what you want to do next, because if you look here, they've got 16 units. The Netherlands have 10 units, but they also have a puppet, which is in the Pacific, known as the Dutch East Indies. That's where a lot of the 
sort of rubber supply is for the allies. So if I were to do this, we're going to take these guys off this area. And I'm going to put them here. And then I'm going to actually get my tanks and put them on that border really quick. We're going to push and take out the Netherlands. However, I could also do this. So, it's kind of like what you want to do first, sort of deal. Um, so by this time, there will probably be about 13 to 14 percent world tension, but because I'm using instant war, it's, you know, 5 percent. We're going to your next focus, if Japan has not sort of fueled or tried to uh, push for something, right? If they haven't really, like, established any world tension yet. I would do this, and I would go for Belgium. Reason being, you can take out Netherlands and Luxembourg later, but if you can bypass the Maginot now, while they aren't to the point of world tension, it could really help you out. Now, you also, you gotta start by taking out one province, which shouldn't be very hard. Especially because if I do this, I can keep my guys there. And I can also throw the rest of them there, which is already touching, you know, they, they can all reach in that area pretty well. So, that'll probably at attract a bit of attention. Um, you've really got to focus on this part of France. So as you can see, France is 30% communist. Um, they will actually stay democratic unless you either boost them or um, a rare chance that they flip. If they manage to flip, it's due to the either world tension or there's something going on with the whole entire you know, situation with do you have historical AI on. If it's not historical, they're more bound to switch sides possibly than what you would experience with a, you know, normal sort of game. So as you can see, um, we are struggling just a little bit, but that is okay. We're gaining a lot of experience from that. Um, and so if we look at our units, we're going to be producing a lot of infantry, and that's going to be something that's going to help us out quite a bit. Um, and so it's you got to really focus on looking and seeing what these are, and ensuring that those are well you know, covered and well put out. So as you can see, we're now pushing in and about to uh, begin establishing that sort of front. So I usually start all my units from Ban Brandenburg. The uh, reason for that is because I want to ensure that... Um, I want to make sure my units start towards my capital. So these will be our cavalry military police. Um, and, you know, give them a... Let's see. We'll give them a castle there. Um, and so you can see they have artillery, which if we want, I'm going to take out the artillery, which, yes, it will damage how they attack, and will damage how that situation is going, but that's the best part, is that they won't require any more artillery, which means 520 infantry equipment, 10 support equipment, so I can build three of them right now. which that will be, with my cavalry MP divisions, that will be what will be garrisoning all my ports once I decide to go for a bigger target. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of political division sort of deals with your anti-democratic, anti-communist, pan-democratic, all that stuff. We're not going to use any of that. Um, and then you look at your economic policy, the military buildup. All of these give a lot of different negative boosts, but it also gives, I think, one or two positives. Uh, this adds one building slot, takes away negatives. So if you have enough political power, you could also take away these and add these to your sort of like arsenal for the war. Uh, and those will give you a boost to your sort of economic status there. We did manage to break through, though we aren't... No, we got it. Yep, we're doing fine there. Um, so 
usually you want to have a bunch of divisions so you kind of hold ports and uh, do all those sort of things at the start. Um, so you can hold all your ports and your main sort of victory areas. Um, you don't really have to worry about them para-dropping troops in as long as you have sort of like a superiority. Oh, that's about to be a tasty encirclement. Oh, wow. So now it is essentially a free game. And, uh... Yeah, now that's... Yep. Now we can essentially have these guys just push around them. Um, and that will give us a full entire frontal set against the French for when we begin to attack them. So this is kind of like the setup plan you kind of want to have to uh, kind of set up and start out your game. Um, and that will give you a better chance to push into France as well as a quicker chance. Now if you wanted to, instead of going after Denmark first and getting the naval superiority sort of in the Baltic, you could um, attack Belgium first, hit Belgium, and then wait and then focus on your economy there and that could help you out quite a bit as you are preparing your push against the allies um, and that, that's kind of like how you could start your game off there um, and if you also wanted to you could also try and take out Czechoslovakia first it doesn't really matter as soon as you get 50 political power you'll have a higher chance at hitting something and kind of like establishing a more suitable like foothold in Europe um, as well as getting more resources as well you know and kind of expanding all of your factories your trade is also going to be influenced a little bit um, it also help you out bypassing and kind of expanding your plan there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take all. And as you can see, we now control Belgium. And if we look down here, we also control this. And if we were to take out the Netherlands, you would have this province here. But since we did that, now we have a push and a hold in Africa. So this is how been how to start your Europe campaign as well as how to start out as the German Reich in my opinion. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.